The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the producer and not necessarily those of WKTV Community Media. Hello, West Michigan. This is Grand Tap Media Business TV. My name is Pamela Keim, your host. The spirit of the show is to introduce West Michigan to all the businesses, nonprofits, individual souls that can help us thrive in our lives. Oh, what a beginning. I, I have a very special guest, Eric Zane, the successful podcaster. This is part two of his interview. I introduced Eric because we're going to be talking in part two on how to start your podcast, really start your podcast. Please welcome Eric Zane. Thank you, Pamela. Thank, Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, let's just start off. We have, in part one, we talked about your background, how you became a podcaster, successful at it. You were able to go from radio to that. Um, you have the voice for it. Thank I you. I have heard his podcast. He's very interested <laughs> in the content. But all right. Well, so let's ask yeah. Eric about WGRD. Legendary radio station. And I was so lucky to be asked to be part of it in 2004. I lived in New Jersey with two other gentlemen. Not, not with them, but we did a show together. And it was it's called the Free Beer and Hot Wing Show. And I did see that. Yeah. yeah. And it was, um, we were very young and, and uh, we didn't know, well, we kind of knew what we were doing, but we, we came to um, uh, Grand Rapids and we started doing the show. And what did you think our city? We really liked it. <laughs> I, I'm from Michigan originally, but I had never <laughs> been to Grand Rapids ever. And I'm from Detroit. And so um, I was uh, 34 yeah. years old with three kids, uh, three very young children my, my, and my wife. And, um, you know, trying to find our way and, and we did. We actually found our way, and the show caught on. And so that was extremely great, because I'd never been in a spot after years of radio. I was like, wow, we're starting to become pretty popular. And it took off. And um, then, it, you know, after it can, got to a point where it's still, it's gotten very, very big and popular, um, I got fired. And so, oh. Man, that was like the worst thing in the world. At the time, I thought, you know. Did you this, see it coming? Um, no. From now, I look back and it's like, I, I often tell people that the final two years, I don't think I was checked in as much as I could have been. And um, Were you getting bored? I don't know what it was. Uh, I, 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 I'm not entirely sure what it was, but if, uh, if I had to kind of quantify it or put a fine point on it, um, it, it didn't feel as much fun as it, as it had been in the past. It, uh, I wasn't enjoying it as much, and I was growing resentful of my relationships with the people that I was working with. And, um, yeah, I think that that kind of uh, uh, leaned on me a little bit. So um, when that rug got pulled out from under me, um, you know, and, and be perfectly honest and fair, I, I uh, tended to... I was the guy on that show that said whatever I wanted to say. And it came to a point where that, that only worked for so long. And then when it didn't work anymore, that was it. So I didn't, I, I what never. What do you mean it didn't work anymore? Well, okay. Because, you know, we're talking yeah. people out to your podcast. You know, when do you, when do you realize? Well, what you know? had happened was, um, and I had for the longest time, worked in an environment where if I said anything that made someone angry, and I typically made sponsors angry because I would say things that, whatever. And um, then the sponsors would call and my boss at the time would smooth it over because it was worth it. It was worth doing that. And I rarely knew when I got in trouble because he, he was making a lot of money <laughs> putting the show on. So it was all good. And so that's, I describe that as having the juice and okay. uh, a degree of arrogance uh, would come with that. So I didn't, I thought my ass didn't stink. So then he left and a new person took over and that really wasn't in his game plan. So when I would get in trouble, I would, he wouldn't smooth it out. And so I would get in trouble. And so this, here you are in the office, the principal, to, right? <laughs> yes. I'm in the corner office and, and that happened many, many times. How did your colleagues handle that? Like your, you know, were they, supportive or were they all starting to you can tell they were kind of distancing yourself i you know we all been there uh when you're the one the person that they yes. know they're targeting yes i don't want to be tainted they so they back you, away what you just said happened 
yeah, that, that I happen. Bet. And, and, yeah. I, and I understand that. I don't. Uh, I don't have any problem with that. It's water under the bridge. I. I know. I. I and uh, and they they still had to uh, uh, work for a living. So that that kind of dried up and. That was it, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. so it uh, it ended that way. It ended that way. It, it wasn't really anything overtly graphic or horrible that I said it was nothing like that or weird. They just got sick of me, and uh, they got okay. tired of putting out all the fires, and that you was know? it. Well, and that sometimes too, when you're on radio, you just get used to speaking your mind. Yeah. And and it, and and not uh, today. Well, I have to say, the culture today is. Yeah, you know, I, I, one I, I word was, away yeah. from. You know, it, it feels like it. It was going to happen. It was going to happen eventually because, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's much worse now. Now you just don't even go there. And, and I, I built what I was able to build through quite literally saying whatever was on my mind, saying what people are thinking but not ap appropriate to say. So I would do that, and that's what allowed me to have people that followed because I didn't care. <laughs> right. And I think that's, you know, that that's a sad thing that that happened. But, uh, you know, with podcasts, I think that's why podcasts have grown. Right. To, the, to exploding as information because people really, a lot of times you're saying what they, they're holding back and they're like, yes, I, I feel the same way. Because, you know, we have all don't want to deal with what's really happening. Right in front of us. And I, and I, that's why I admire some of these podcasters. I'm like, yeah, I hope you do make a living off that because I personally, this is a very community show, introducing people, learning about um, behind the businesses of who everybody is, right? The leadership, the owners, and then the individuals that can help us thrive. But it's pretty a pretty safe yeah. show. Well, But there's times I wish I could just, you know, this is what, you know, you really want to, sometimes you want to ask. And you're just like, I better not ask that. I better make sure it stays pretty. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and I understand doing an interview show, it's almost like it, it's, you're, you're carrying it on as a conversation. And, and, exactly. that's, and that's what it has to be because mm -hmm. um, you're introducing people to the audience that, that typically they don't know. So it's your job put them front and center, make them uh, give an interesting, uh, an ending, I'm sorry, an interesting interview, ask them compelling questions that make them go, hmm, and, and, that's, and that's what you do, so mm -hmm. that, right. that's and good. So you, yeah, you, have you been asked pretty interesting questions? I think I, I've been very <laughs> much so, and you've made me very comfortable, and you, you do a good job at that, so. Let's talk about, um, we were talking about Joe Rog Rogan uh, last time, <laughs> but right now I think a lot of people, such as even myself, uh, find myself worried about the cancer culture saying something that you might get you as upset because we all have a we all have our thoughts and opinions and if we don't get those out how do we know they're wrong or maybe we need to go to a different avenue do you know what i mean yeah um, you know so let's talk about what your thoughts are and what you do about uh, that fear boy yeah um especially podcasting um because there's a long catalog so if someone if you're in someone's crosshairs they can find numerous examples of um, of something that is cancelable so then they go and they reach out to sponsors and they try to end your livelihood and I think we're starting to come out of that I, I think I, so? yeah I, I, I do uh. and, and the reason why I say that is because Joe did it it's for because us. Rogan <laughs> said something ridiculous and it's like what a horrible thing to say he says something that was in the news. It's very easy to find this. Um, and and uh, he came out and said, yeah, that was terrible. And I think... Um, but it, don't we all say stuff when we're younger yeah, I, that I, we learn? And that's what he explained, that it was... And does it make it right? No. Does it mean you can't earn an income anymore? Uh, of course not. That It shouldn't, it shouldn't be that way. Um, and so being the magnitude of what he said, which was really bad. Yeah, and we're not going to say it on Yeah, here. It, it's uh. just a little weird. If he, And he survived it. He survived it. But and wasn't I, it like 10 years, 15 years ago? I mean, it think was about a long the time ago. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I've, I've, I'll just tell you right now, I've said horrible things too. And if anyone ever came up to me and said, you know, and, and, and said, hey, this is what he said. I, I, I'm just going to own it. And I'd say, well, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, and just not, I think it's important to acknowledge those things. And I also think it's important um, to, 
to put that into perspective and frame it. And I, I don't think it's appropriate for people who do get busted for saying something like that to say, I'm so sorry I did that. I'm not sorry. I would never say I'm sorry for me saying a joke or being funny or being stupid. Uh, does Billy Crystal say sorry about his act from 25 years ago? I don't know why I thought of him. Uh, no, of course not. Of right. course not. That was representative of the times at the moment, and it worked out. If you look at everything from the past in the lens of today, well, then we're all screwed, and that's the end of it. There is no place in the world for it. I will say this, though. There are, there are specific <coughs> things, and it depends on context that Mike, well, wait a minute, let's take a, I don't want to say that everything is, is, uh, cannot be canceled. There are things that actually I would like, I mean, that you have to pay attention to and decide whether or not you want to uh, have that still being representative, you know? Well, like who if, decides? Like if you find out that uh, someone who you work for is a neo-Nazi, you're going to want that guy canceled, right? You know, I mean, <laughs> that's, it all comes down to context and, and, and discernment. But if you were to just say uh, everybody gets a blank check to cancel anybody, that's not fair or appropriate, in my opinion. I, 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 I you know, like I said, we, we, you know, this, is the big, this is the big topic because I think a lot of people hold themselves back and actually say in their opinion, or they, you could hear them in their voice or trying to get around the elephant that's in the, you know, the real problem, right? Correct. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that name or whatever you want to say. And um, I think it's sad because I think I tell people, how do you know if, if I don't explain why I'm thinking what I'm thinking? And you could, I could have been totally off base. Right. I could have totally, maybe it was an experience I had that had nothing to do with the, and to have, bring that process through my thought process and then kind of bring me back around to help me, maybe I, I am wrong, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to keep that thought because I can't share it because I'm going to get in trouble. Right. And I think that that's not a good way because people need, what I said in my 20s, oh my goodness, I'm glad it wasn't recorded. I had a lot of things I believe and I learned later that wasn't true. Right, and you wouldn't say that now. You right. wouldn't say those things now, but what it's, has happened is people generally, in radio especially, um, have pulled back so far right. that they won't give you anything compelling about, if you listen to any show today they're not going to sit there and give you their opinion about ukraine they're going to act like it's not happening they're not going to talk about it they won't they won't talk about covid they won't talk about things going on in the world because they're too frightened about what could happen to them enter podcasting mm -hmm. uh, the ability to think and, and speak freely um, about just about anything and that's very um, uh, attractive to people and that's why people have, I mean, most people get their content from their phone through a podcast, yes. through a YouTube video, things like that. The uh, traditional ways of uh, uh, radio, it's, it's no one turns to that anymore. Because I they don't, don't, they do. don't, they no. don't get it. They don't, it, it's mm -hmm. just not offered anymore. Um, so uh, you've got hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who say, I want to start a podcast. I want to do this. And this is how I'm going to do it. The first thing they need to do is have an idea of what they want to talk about, how they can do it, and then, you know, take a little time and coming up with uh, expanding on that, on that, because with just a few keystrokes and a short amount of time, you can have a podcast platform where you're, you're in business. You know? You're in business. Yeah. And then when you say, all right, so you do a lot with just what you're seeing in the world, what you're reading, kind of similar. To some of the talk radio uh, people, you're just looking around, or your experience when you went to the store and ran into had an incident, which is kind of kind of cool. But you know, if I was looking at myself when you were at this class that you taught here at WKTV, right? There was a lot of people that had their own kind of you mm -hmm. know idea. Yep. Right. But should you look at your what you're good at or what you you know, and not even expert, but where you have some knowledge, should you start there? Well, what, what do you think? I think it all ba it all comes down to what a person is comfortable talking to. There was a young lady. That's Nika had experience as a young mother, really young, and she, as a uh, as a teenager, had a child. So the idea was, 
Young Mother podcast, talking about relatable things. And I thought, that's a great idea. And um, one of the things she was all set to do was give facts, and um, th which is fine, and uh, uh, insight for young mothers uh, to help them avoid the issues that she had when she was a young person. Correct. She's in her, like, 30s now. Right. And uh, I thought, that's great, but anybody can get that. Anybody can go get these resources with just looking on the Internet. But what the one thing that they can't get is you and your personality. Have you ever been at a party making people laugh and been the life of the party? She's like, well, yeah. I go, there you go. Take that with what you know, and now you have a show. So build on it. And then let you make it so that they want to see you. You're the star. And then own that and believe it. And uh, like uh, Mr. Micro, you know, uh, fertilize it and, and just make it blossom by practicing and doing your show. And knowing that, because sometimes people, I almost look at this as like a podcasting coach, which is kind of what we did when we were all together. Yeah, yeah. Because if a person, um, too often people, when they get behind a microphone or in front of a camera, they, they lock up. Mm -hmm. We don't see their natural side. And their natural side is what everybody loves. You got to learn to capture that in a podcast form or a video blog or video podcast form. And then you're a winner. Anybody can do this. All you got to do is let your, your what moves the meter with all your relationships become, transition that over to now it's part of the medium. You're incorporating it into content. Okay. You know, unless you're just someone who no one likes, <laughs> you, then that person can't do a podcast. But you, everybody has, you know, they're, they're, they're great at relationships. Uh, well, I always say that that's the only way people, people are just one, like we've talked about, you know, you're either, you're one relationship, you know, meeting somebody, one post, one conversation, a way of getting what you want. Right. An idea. Like, I bet you uh, go to, go to events and you, you could probably come up with a lot of content as you're, as you're moving through the room. Oh yeah. And meeting, are you always in search of, of that? Is it hard to turn that off? Because especially you have two hours you have to film the next day going to event yeah going the next day. It, it's a little more subtle um if i um i let the day unfold and then when i'm getting ready to start the, the next podcast 22 hours later i'm like what did i do in the last 22 hours oh i gotta talk about this i gotta talk about i did a show with pamela i gotta talk about this will all manifest on my show you know, oh, it, it, <laughs> so it'll all just and it, it might just be a small thing or a passing thing. But typically it just for me, the way it works for me and it doesn't work like this for everybody, but it, it just leads into some type of anecdotal moment or something that I can play off of and, uh -huh. you know, just have fun with it. Do you bring your wife into? Should you bring family members? I mean, maybe you you have a funny family, right? Yes. I mean, I knew I just interviewed somebody during COVID that he was a Jewish gentleman that he did a whole podcast on the, on his Jewish family. Yes. And it was kind of cool. Good. You know, his, you know, his you mom, his dad. It. Yes, you I did. It. I did remember it that. It he wasn't. He was from California, but we were uh, friends of Stephanie Kolakowski's, uh, and we were interviewing, and I'm like, because, yeah, just during COVID, I had everything shut down. Right. All I had was my family yep. there. So um, he started this podcast. <laughs> well, I, um, I, my wife is a, is a radio wife, so she knows uh, I had always – worn my heart on my sleeve and a lot of the things that happened in my household would wind up on the radio and that and that remains true um now and she just happens to be an excellent personality and she's okay. funny and um is you know she is a gold mine so um it isn't it's random it's if something is if something has happened in the household that is worthy of discussion it it will manifest on the show yeah. Because all these people can relate to these things. We all, you know, we all have moments. And everybody's family has something that's funny. What know? do you hear mostly when, I'm, I'm sure people try to pick your brain when they know you're the, who you are and the podcaster. Because it is something that I think a lot of people, it's kind of like getting to the point where most people used to say, I want to write a book. I hear mostly now, I want to start a podcast. Uh, and I, I, I find that interesting. But what, what do people ask you? 
I mean, when you're at dinner parties, what do you or talk whatever. about? That's, what do we that's talk? What do you, what do you do? What do you, what do you what do you talk about? And I said, well, kind of everything. You know, if I've got two hours a day every day, Monday through Friday, um, you know, I it's it's not that different than what you would hear uh, in terms of how a radio show tries to fill in time. But I have the benefit of um, I can actually talk about everything. So. Um, like I was getting to the point earlier, radio doesn't really do that anymore. I, I, I do. Um, right. So um, it's broken down into three things. Personal stories, the interaction with the live audience who's writing their responses and their own jokes, and um, that's continuing to evolve. And then my take on what's going on in the world. And... Um, and your There's wife, does she walk in the on. room and just start talking with you? She or has, how does that work? If she comes up, uh, sometimes she, she, uh, a story might pop into my head, and I say, hey, oh, by the way, this reminds me of a moment when I first met my wife 33 years ago. And then, okay, that's perfect. Deal her in. She either comes up into the room, or I'll get the phone, and I'll call her while she's downstairs, or, oh, God. You know, just, it's that type of thing. We just make it work. Um, and it, it, it's that on the fly, that it could be that spur of the moment. Other times she's had a great story that I, you've got to come in and tell the story, you know, something like that. It could be premeditated in that way. So it, it's, uh, it's kind of wide open, you know, whatever, whatever happens to strike us. Yeah, well, okay, and you have, do you have pets? Yes, they're <laughs> in the studio with me. <laughs> they're in the studio with you, yes. okay. Yes, I have a couch and they, they sleep there. Do they really? Yes, yeah, several dogs. There's three dogs that sit in there. And uh, they've become part of the show. And is there anybody that you, you know, I know um, Joe Rogan is very popular, but is there anybody that you follow that you learn a, that's a little further down the road? I mean, should people? Um, um, I can honestly tell you that I am still on the search for a podcast. This is going to sound incredibly arrogant, but I for have. you? No, yeah. <laughs> no. I have struggled with trying to find something that I really like. That I like, I gotta go to. I have to listen to it. I have I have some friends um, that I listen to. Uh, this friend of mine named Stu McAllister, who I listen to, but I I I, I listen to it. And I'm like, boy, I almost wish that you were, were doing more podcasting so I could get more of it. And then I forget about it. I almost like because he's uh, he does it once or twice a week, you know. Right. Um, and you did say that in the training. Terrible about that. Once you put something together, let's just say it's 15 minutes of content about the idea of, of posting at the same time every day. I have a struggle with that myself. On my social media platform, my show comes on, WKTV and stuff, at the same time every week, you know, two days a week it's on. But I have a struggling myself, making sure my content right. goes up. So, like, should it be, like, 9 o'clock every Wednesday? If you're going to and then keep it consistent, what did you share with the, with the students? Yeah, whatever you guests? commit to. Don't back off of that. So if you say once a month, do it once a month. You can always increase the frequency, but it's probably not a good idea to back off the frequency. Okay. Um, you know, because you're creating, you're creating fans. You're creating people that are going to go to you. And so don't, they, they get fickle. And if you give them an opportunity to not listen to you, they're going to forget about you quickly. Yes. So it's important that you commit to that and, and whatever it is you decide to do, keep at it. And that there's going to be times that you're going to feel like you're banging your head against the wall, like, but keep at it because you never know when someone is going to find you. So keep at it. Keep doing a good job. Be consistent. And for the love of God, when you start your podcast, in a minute, you should be talking about something interesting or compelling. Compelling. I'm you better. have to, you can, I, this is why I struggle listening to podcasts, because too often they start and I'm waiting too long before they're doing something that's going to interest me. That is popular Get today. Get after it. Get after it. You well, the I visual, mean? the visual, the YouTube channel, I guess it's more like a, they're not really a podcast, but they, I get a lot of my content from YouTube. Right. But, you know, they have 15, 10, 15 minutes. They have music and they're right. sort of. That's like the becoming the norm. Right, right. But, I, I mean, like, I guess that can, is whatever it takes to hook them in, you know. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. I right. think that if you want to win your audience, I mean, it's okay to hook them in and then ease off the gas. Mm -hmm. But if, because typically when people start to listen to podcasts, they just start at the beginning. So you don't want to start with 
eight minutes of nothing. You want to start with something. It doesn't matter what it is. But is it a question usually? It could be. As long, it doesn't matter what it is. As long as it's something that's going to make you go, okay, you've won, you've won my attention. You okay. want, you've got that opportunity. Don't waste it, you know? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the, where to promote and how much do you do and when you get it out there because there is a lot of platforms you just it's a, and it could be expensive to do um, a lot of that or not. Well, you know, I mean, like I know WKTV works the works with the anchor platform. That's right. And the anchor platform is free, and mm -hmm. it is uh, it talks to all the other platforms. So, uh, ninety percent of people uh, listen on Apple Podcasts. Anchor talks to Apple Podcasts. They do okay. that for you. So that's nice. Um, that's excellent, and uh, so there's that. But uh, how do you tell the world? I mean, because if you have a podcast, then people have to notice it. Correct. So if you are a person starting up a podcast from scratch, no one knows who you are. So there are people that kind of root around for it and discover it, but that takes too long and word of mouth just kind of goes at a snail's pace and you're looking at download numbers and it's just, gosh, I, how, what do I do? Right. Well, um, what we are doing right now, you network. You talk to other podcasters, you become friends, you sell yourself, you get on other shows, other small shows, and you work your way up. And okay. that's probably one of the biggest ways you can do this. There are other platforms that exist that have a cross-promote feature where um, you do what I just said. You can deal with, uh, talk to other shows that are part of, let's say, on uh, uh, this hypothetical scenario would be like, um, I don't use the Anchor platform, but um, it wouldn't surprise me if they have a feature, either now, currently, or are working on it, where you can communicate with other shows on Anchor. Right. The platform I use, um, I can communicate with other shows. And then we agree. What do you mean by communicate? Yeah, you can I know what talk you mean to by them talking. Through, the, uh, through the platform. It's almost like, a, like, an, like an email. OK. And so, uh, hey, I'm Eric. I'm from the Eric Zinchel podcast. You want to cross promote? Yes, I do. So then I sit down and I record a 60 second. Hey, listen to the Eric St. Joe podcast. Ah. I know you love Joe Blow's show, but okay. try my show too. And then they do the same thing. And then my show starts and Joe Blow's ad is at the beginning of my show. Hey, I'm Joe Blow. I know you love the Eric Zane show. Well, check out my show. And then my ad plays on his show. So now we're cross promoting. Oh, wonderful idea. A lot of platforms do do this. I don't know about Anchor, but that's one way that I do it. Also, like for young lady who's got um, the show about uh, being a mother at a young age. Yes. She's going to be reaching out to various, you know, um, people in her circle about her podcast, Facebook groups. You know, it's a lot of grassroots efforts. It's a lot of uh, uh, basic stuff that's very important and stuff that I took for granted when I was in radio. You know, you're on the radio, boom, and everybody knows you, stuff like that. It's not, it's not like that anymore. You actually have to put in some effort. It's, it's stuff that... Um, a lot of noise out there. You yeah. have to get noticed. Yeah, and, I, and I still do it to this day. I work very hard trying to um, uh, be known. you you got to tell people about it. This is Pamela Kine from Grand Tap Media Business TV, and we will catch you next time. Take care, everyone. The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the producer and not necessarily those of WKTV Community Media.